morning and welcome to Washington National Cathedral and Bethlehem Chapel on this Friday, March 4th. My name is Patrick Kieser and it's my joy to be with you this morning for this service of prayer. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. From Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin and I shall be pure. Wash me and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Our reading this morning comes from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter, beginning at the 10th verse. As Jesus sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. Then the disciples of John came to him, saying, why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, The wedding guests cannot mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them, can they? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one sews a piece of untrunk cloth on an old cloak, for the patch pulls away from the cloak, and a worse tear is made. Neither is new wine put into old wineskins. Otherwise, the skins burst, and the wine is spilled, and the skins are destroyed. But new wine is put into fresh wineskins, and so both are preserved. Lent is perhaps the most well-known season of the church year, even by those who don't consider themselves Christians. Yet it seems to be the one whose intentions and ultimate purposes are often misunderstood. I think we often twist Lent into an exercise in self-punishment or deprivation for its own sake. We won't consume chocolate or dessert or meat or alcohol or whatever it may be simply because we need to deprive ourselves of something we enjoy so that we feel bad in some way. Let me be clear that I'm not saying that practices of self-denial or fasting are inappropriate or unhelpful. I am saying, though, that we need to be clear about our purposes for doing them. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus faces all sorts of criticisms for the company he keeps and the sumptuousness with which he dines with said tax collectors and sinners. To those who criticize him, he says, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. We too ought to heed this call as we set out on the path of Lent and ponder what Jesus means when he says that. Here he's slightly modified a verse from the prophet Hosea. For I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather 
than burnt offerings. Mercy is about compassion, forgiveness, a withholding of consequences that are deserved. Lent must be about God's mercy for us, and a large part of what we seek to do during this holy time is to come to understand that more and more. And that's the purpose of the practices that we adopt so that we might understand just a bit more God's infinite mercy and in turn grow to be people who are ourselves merciful as Jesus exhorted us, be merciful just as your Father is merciful. All of the practices that we undertake help dispel the myth that we are completely self-reliant and totally in control, and instead call us to remember our dependence on God, who is the merciful giver of all. Practices of fasting of some sort or giving up something that we usually enjoy can also remind us in a very real way of the reality that so many daily suffer from lack of food and basic necessities and in turn can then propel us to actually do something about that in whatever small way we can. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, says the Lord. This Lent, let us by all means pursue those disciplines that we feel God has called us to, but let us never lose sight of the purpose of this whole season that we might come to see and know God and God's mercy and grow little by little into those who are merciful, just as God is. Now I invite you to join with me and pray the words our Savior Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In penitence and in faith, let us make our prayer to the Father and ask for his mercy and grace. For your holy people, that they may triumph over evil and grow in grace, we pray to you, O Lord. For the leaders of the nations, that you will guide them in ways of mercy and truth. We pray to you, O Lord. For the needy, that they may not be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. We pray to you, O Lord. For the sick in body, mind, and spirit, that they may know your power to heal. We pray to you, O Lord. For the poor in spirit, that they may inherit the kingdom of heaven and see you face to face. We pray to you, O Lord. Now in the silence to follow, I invite you to offer your own prayers. Grant, most merciful Lord, to your faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.